Thanks for staying with us. All right, so just to give us some insight into this conversation we're having, we're going to be speaking with us right now, uh, the Director General, Nigerian Army Resource Center, Major General Garuba Wahab, retired. He will be sharing his thoughts on the insecurity that is prevalent, especially in the FCT. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for the invite. Yes, I know you are here for the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, but we'll get to that in a minute. But we just wanted to hear your thoughts on the current insecurity, especially in the city of Pa. We discussed earlier um, the young girl and two young girls that were killed. Actually, there are four that were, that were, that were killed. Four out of ten. Um, the ten kidnappings are across the FCT. Two are really prominent because those, those, those are the news that we're getting right now for, for Lauren Shaw, Ariyo, and uh, Nabiha um, Akridia. Um, these two young girls were killed by the, the, by, by the abductors. Now, what are your own thoughts on what the government can do to reduce the spate of kidnapping, especially in the FCT? Mm -hmm. Major Hello, General, thank you, you very much. Did you hear my question? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of events are happening, and definitely there is a lot of insecurity in the country, uh, which includes the Federal Capital Territory. But uh, one thing I want everybody to realize is that Nigeria is not the only country that has security problems. Uh, insecurity is a global issue. And uh, the, the security agencies are putting in their best. The government has laid down policies and guidelines as to what is to be done and what should be done. What is required is the support of all Nigerians. Because uh, like experts I keep on saying, uh, we have a population of uh, over 200 million. And if we combine the entire security organizations and their personnel, they are not up to 2 million. And that is not enough. So what is required is for the average Nigerian to be part of the security apparatus, the security architecture. Those who are doing most of these bad things, these anti-social activities, are not spirits. They are humans. And people see them. But because we are detached from the security architecture, people don't feel it as part of their responsibility to report whatever they see. And whatever goes around and comes around, if we believe it does not affect us today, somewhere along the line is going to affect those who are close to us. So whatever is being done by the security agencies, it is, it is mandatory, it is necessary for all Nigerians to be part of what is happening. That is the best way. And that's the only way to solve the problem we're facing now. So uh, what, what do you think about um, Nigerians contributing uh, money to be able to rescue these uh, young ladies that were kidnapped? What, what are your thoughts on that, sir? Well, there are two schools of thoughts. <laughs> if you, uh, on, one, on, one, uh, on one side, you have to assist those who are victims. Mm -hmm. But then we must find a way of not letting kidnapping be a, a clear cut economic activities where people believe it is the easiest way to make money nowadays. Somebody is kidnapped and uh, 10 million, 15 million ransom is paid 15. and people contribute. That encourages a lot, of, a lot of these bad activities to continue. Well, people will argue, what about those who are being kept captive? If you don't pay the ransom, they won't be released. But the more we pay, the more we encourage those who are into it. The more we encourage those who are sitting by the fence and view what is happening as a pure economic activity. And so they, they go into it. So it is left for us to decide what we want to do. And to do that, the, the, the judicial system, the justice system must be up and doing. And that's a major, major fact about the whole issue. If you arrest somebody and it takes five, ten years to prosecute, what we are doing is to encourage impunity where people believe nothing is going to happen. So they keep on doing whatever they're doing. So if you contribute money, well, people might be released, but we're encouraging this cash 22 issue. A lot of people are encouraged to go into it. So the best bet is you sanction those who are involved, you ensure that the judicial system, the justice system is up and doing, and it's, it's, it's applicable to everybody. What would you say about... Uh you know, security architecture. Do you think that um, we are truly struggling? Do you, do you think it's lack of manpower? Do you think it's that a lack of technical, um, uh, you know, advancement? 
or do you just think it's just inefficiencies? A lot of a lot of issues are involved. Yes, the manpower issue. But you see, in the military, there is this belief that when you deal with urban warfare, which is close to what we are facing right now, we are, we are dealing with insecurity within the urban setup. The more you put human beings there, the more it consumes. So what is required is a balanced situation where enough manpower is, get, is gotten. We go into technology, we, we exploit technology, because there is no way we can depend solely on humans we must utilize technology, but above all, the policy about some of these things must be clear and far-reaching, so that those who have to develop their strategy will know what they're expected to do. Where the policy is vague, or where they believe that, after all, even if you arrest these people, nothing is going to happen. So we are discouraging a lot of those who will have been part of the entire package. So we need to structure the entire system to be a whole of society approach. Everybody should be involved including technology, increase the manpower, ensure that the equipment required are provided. And I'm sure a lot of things, a lot of uh, achievement will be made. Okay, so I heard when you said that, you know, um, payment of ransom encourages kidnapping. I understand that logic. It's basic logic. But what would you say the families should then do, you know, give up on loved ones? How do they, what, should there be, um, an immediate approach on the part of the police or, you know, so that families can trust to it? Or um, what, what will family do? Because we have a messy situation where families now start to solicit the funds online, which is even more messy. So what would you advise, in this, particularly on this particular case in question? That was it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Where if, if, we, if we decide to say, okay, we are going to, to contribute uh, let's, let's bring money and contribute to those who, to the family of those who are, who are arrested. We are indirectly encouraging everybody. Uh, we need to encourage the police to perform their job, give them the equipment required, give them the support. A situation where we deride the police, uh, what can they do? They can't do anything. They are part and parcel of the whole thing. does not go well. Everybody must be part of this. And uh, like I said, if you decide you want to give, keep on giving money to those who kidnap, we're encouraging a lot of others who are sitting by the fence, who have no job doing. So that leads to my next point, which is we must find a way of reducing the level of unemployment. We must engage the youth. It is believed that we have more than 60% Nigerians who are youth, and more than 55% of them are not gainfully engaged. They are either they're employed or they're employed or not employed because of lack of skill or the facilities are not there. So we, we have a lot of issues to look at critically. And f as we solve one, other problems will come. We can't wait until, okay, let us solve this problem first before we move to the next one. It will be a whole of uh, societal approach. Everybody must be involved. So increase the number of policemen, engage, uh, encourage them, provide the equipment required, engage the other agencies, the SS, even the military, the civil defense, everybody must be involved. And there must be effective coordination, right. <laughs> which is a little bit lacking right now. Yes, it's be, activities are being coordinated, some but would, it is some, not uh, some will argue, sir, up notch as to what it should be. Some will argue that it's not about the number of policemen you have. It's about the kind of laws we have. Um, some, that there, was, there, there was an article I read some time ago reminding us that um, the military back in the 1970s had um, introduced the firing squad decree for crimes like robbery, kidnapping, and stuff like that, terrorists and all that. And someone said, listen, the only thing that can, that can fix this problem is the ruthless, ruthless consequence to these kind of actions. Uh, when we try to uh, stick with the democratic um, process of rule of law, taking law and all that, those kind of things kind of can be painstaking and, and justice denied can also be interviewed as the justice um, delayed or justice delayed is justice denied. So the point is, do you think as a military man that you are, uh, retired, um, do you think that we should have some kind of a decree, a firing squad decree, where the, um, the justice is immediate, such that when you are caught kidnapping, you immediately are killed for the crime you have committed. When you do that, because this, I mean, I, I saw here that the decree went into effect back in April 1971, where the notorious armed robber, Babatuli Folorunshaw, caught alongside others, William Oyazamo, others were executed, they're barbage. 
So these are things that we don't want to see, but do you think, especially the crime rates we have now, is almost similar, probably even more than what they had in the early 70s. Do you think it's something we should consider today? It is, uh, to, uh, experts have argued that it is not the harshness of the law that matters. It is the application of the law. Mm -hmm. The laws are there, but we are not applying. Like I said mm -hmm. earlier, if you take a case to court and it takes five, ten years for the case to be resolved, then we are creating a problem. We are encouraging impunity. Even if you bring decree and the process is too long, it's too prolonged, it takes 10 years to resolve a single case. It will not solve the problem. Yeah. It is for us to find a way, Minister of Justice and the judiciary generally, to ensure speedy trial of cases, fair and firm trial of cases, not just wasting time and not just what we are seeing nowadays where people believe it, justice is for sale. It shouldn't be. It, justice, there has to be social justice. The law should be applicable to everybody. It's like I'm cut off. No, we can hear you very clearly, sir. Because <laughs> we're yeah, quiet. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah. Anyway, I guess so. We just we want to just hear your thoughts on this. I'm going to go on a show. We are going to uh, implement whatever decree. If they are not ready to do it speedily, we still continue to have the problem. It is to ensure that the, the justice or the judiciary performs regularly, fairly, firmly, and equitably. Okay. All right. So I think that's all we can take on this. But I really, we just wanted to hear your own. Um, perspective on this issue of uh, insecurity. When we come back, we're going to focus on the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.